So I've gone through my vocal and I've chosen the parts I like best. Now I want to do some basic cleanup on the track, checking all the fades and crossfades, and removing any parts where there are long periods of silence, like the intro and the guitar solos. But why go through all the hassle of cleaning up the track? Besides me just saying because I said so, remember all these little bits of audio will become part of our final mix if we leave them in. Even the parts where I'm not singing, like in the intro and the guitar solos, there is a slight hiss, the sound of me breathing, and the ambient sound of the room where I recorded, maybe even a little bit of headphone playback, which is also known as bleed. When we leave that in, that low-level sound gets added to our mix. And if it's not intended to be there, it's best we take it out. So let's put that knowledge to use. We've already split up the vocal track when we did our comp, so the guitar solos are already separate items. So let's just select those and delete them. Just select the first solo here. I can see there's no waveform in there, and we're in solo number one. And it's just a matter of selecting, delete. So the number two, select, delete. We've removed those empty parts, so now let's talk about the fades. I've talked about fades and crossfades on other videos, but I haven't really explained exactly what they are or why we use them. Crossfades are transitions between the end of one media item and the beginning of another. They're used to smooth out a sudden transition between two media items and to help prevent pops and clicks. Fades are like crossfades, but they only apply when there's no overlap between items. So fades are for fading up the volume of an item from nothing, like a fade in, or fading down to nothing, a fade out. Now, by default, Reaper puts very short 10 millisecond fade ins and fade outs on all audio files to prevent pops and clicks. However, sometimes a longer fade will sound better. Should also mention that fades are non-destructive, meaning they don't actually change your audio file and they can always be undone. Now I want to go through and make sure there are crossfades wherever two media items touch one another, and that there are fade-ins and fade-outs on all the items. I'm going to start at the beginning and work my way through the entire vocal track to the end. I want to make sure I don't miss anything in this process. So let's start at the beginning. In fact, let's make this track a little bit bigger. Just pulling down in the track control panel. So let's clean up this beginning. I'll need to zoom in. I'm going to hit W to make sure I'm at the beginning of the track and scroll wheel to zoom in, and instead of just cutting this and selecting it and deleting it, I'm actually just going to grab the left edge of this item and just drag it to the right. And the sound will simply start wherever this edge is. Now, it doesn't even look like there's a fade on there, but as I said, Reaper does put a very, very short fade on by default. In fact, let's zoom in and take a look at this. So here we have this very, very, very short fade. I'm going to zoom out again, because we don't need to see it to adjust it. Oh, actually, you can see the edge of it. But when our cursor is near the top of the media item, we can grab this. This is the, the fade adjustment tool. Click and drag over to the beginning, where right where our audio starts. You can see the audio starts right here. Just going to drag it to there. I'm also going to solo our vocal track so we can just hear the effect that this is having. So I'm going to play this now. We're going to start just a little bit before the fade. I'm going to zoom out as well so that we can see a bit better. And I'm going to hit play and we're going to take a listen. Hang your... Oh, there's a little right at the beginning there. So I don't necessarily want to cut it out, but I do want to lower the volume of that. So the best way for me to do this right now is to actually change the shape of this fade. And we do that by getting the cursor fade icon to come back up and right clicking. And this gives us a number of different options for fade shapes. Now this default one is usually good most of the time, but I'm going to choose this one here because it's got a slower start and then a faster end. Let's try that. So now the level is going to come up like that. And if we take a listen, hang up. still hear that little sound, but it's not as distracting to me. All right, let's continue through this. I'm going to hold alt down and scroll to scroll from left to right. And here's another spot here. I'm going to just zoom in and see what we've got. Yeah, see, there's no crossfade here. We just have a fade very quick fade out, 
and a very quick fade in. And I'd rather have a cross fade to make sure we have a very smooth transition between these two. Now it doesn't matter whether or not we overlap the item on the right to the left or the item on the left to the right. That's really up to you when there's this much empty space around, you can pretty much do this however you want. I'm going to take the item on the right and extend it to the left. So when I see my cursor turn into this icon, I can hold shift and drag this over to the left. And it automatically creates a crossfade between the two files. So I'm going to zoom out. We're just going to take a listen. Come. Yeah, I don't hear any clicks or pops, so we're good on that one. Let's move on to the next. Ah, this one it looks like I already did put a crossfade on. Good. Let's just double check that. Old way. Hmm. I can actually hear that transition. I'm going to try moving this fade and that I do by getting my cursor in this position and it looks like the cross fade with the two little arrows and I can move it from left to right. Sometimes just the smallest change in timing can make a big difference. Old way. To me that sounds a little bit better. I mean maybe you can't tell the difference. If you can't tell the difference then don't worry about it. For me I like that a bit better. Here's our next one. I can't see enough of a crossfade, and, and if I'm zoomed at this level, I'd like to see one. So I'm going to just take the media item on the right and overlap it to the one on the left. So I get my cursor in this position, hold shift, and drag over. And I'll move again just to the right using the Alt key. Same thing here. It looks like there's a bit of a breath there, so I'm going to, again, I might actually... I actually need to zoom in, so I can bring my playhead over here, zoom in, and I want to move this fade over just a little bit to the left. Uh, no long. That sounds good, very natural. Zoom out. Now there's a bit more of a gap here. I might actually want to take this out and make this silent. So I can actually, instead of putting a cross fade, I can grab this side and simply shorten. Now, there is a very quick fade out. You can trust me on that. We can also go in and see it. I want to just lengthen that. So I'm going to go up to the top here, click, and drag over. Zoom out, and we'll have to do the same thing for the fade in on the right-hand side. I'm going to bring this a little bit closer. Do a fade in. What we'll do is we'll just listen to make sure we haven't cut anything off and made it sound unnatural. Uh, save. Cut, y'all. Yeah. There, that doesn't sound unnatural at all. That sounds very good. So I'm going to continue through the rest of this track, putting crossfades where they need to be, or fade ins and fade outs. And through the magic of editing, we'll be back. Okay, well now let's take a look at the end of this vocal. I see there's a couple little bits and pieces here. So I want to clean this up by just selecting these little pieces, because I don't need them. I'm going to hit delete, select that guy, hit delete, and tighten this up as well, because I've got a lot of empty space here. So I just want to get my cursor here, click, holding shift to release the grid, and move it over to the left like that. And fade out by just going up to the top. Let's take a listen. Way. Good. I just want to make sure that I don't cut anything off. So using fades and crossfades may seem a little tricky at first. When you have to ask yourself, where should I put the fade? What shape should it be? How long should it be? Well, once you get the hang of using fades and crossfades when you're editing, they'll become an extremely powerful and creative tool. Remember, the goal is to make sure the sound is as seamless as possible so you can't hear the transition. Placing fades at the beginning and end of all media items will make sure they start and end either fading up or fading down to silence. And that's going to be a lot less noticeable than an instantaneous stop or start. I'm going to be working with fades quite a bit in other videos, so it's good to have a clear understanding of what they are and how they work.